Is Dylan in the office? Yes. He is okay, good. We usually start wrapping up around 5 o'clock. Oh, Cool, awesome. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, I would definitely give you guys a call back later today. Awesome, thank you, sir. That looks cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. You like it? Oh, yeah, dude, I love you know, this one. Nice. Did you watch the video already? Uh, I didn't. Like, I got to a certain Shut up. Don't, don't lie to me. <laughs> don't lie. Get over here. <laughs> you took too long to say no, so you hesitated. <laughs> Well, there you go. Happy. This is Marco's on his way, but <clears throat> this is for celebrating a hundred thousand subscribers with us since you've been here since the beginning. So. This one is 100% you. When we saw that, I was like, that's Dylan all day. But those are the ones, we got you those because those are more appropriate for the store. I actually love, I actually love that one. Dude, that looks awesome. Yeah. Dang, look at the collar. Oh my God. Dang, look at that. Dude, I'm going to be the coolest guy on the block. Oh my God. Dang, look at that suit. It goes with the Jacob. There you go. I'd go right. I'd go just the one with it. So You're much. welcome. I think that one's like a limited. One of those is like a limited of 300 pieces. Really? Yeah. And the way they had it set up on display is they had this shirt under that jacket. So here's what that's I, pretty here's what I cool. do know. I know you guys went above and beyond to try to flip a coin for me. And we nobody did. Nobody else could flip a coin. Well, it kept properly. landing on. It kept landing on tails. <laughs> the world did. The world didn't want you to have this. <laughs> I Thank thought you, you were 15 minutes away. Oh, right. Do I? I told him you were on your Thank way. You, <laughs> I hope you that like it. Whoa. He freaked out. It's funny. Dude, oh. Actually, I walked in and I, I set him right here and he was just still doing a deal oh, <laughs> for like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, these are so cool. We were trying to figure out what was your style. Oh, man. You guys did awesome. Thank Dude, you so good. much. You guys are really cool. My favorite are the black and white ones. <laughs> The colorful ones are too much for me. Dang, these are all awesome. And they're, that not, screams. Too, they're not too much, so I can wear them around the office, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, wear whatever you want. <laughs> you, said that like, you said that with like a question mark at the end. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> I'm not really familiar with You were that. like, wear like, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Happy 100K. Yeah. We still have your uh, diamond uh, present. Yeah. So we can talk about set. that, too. Yeah, the diamond date, yes. I've had a few nibbles. Price needs to go down. So yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's what I was for sure. Yeah. Uh, I got oh, you a did? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a okay. sticker Pepsi. How much? Um, I'm looking to get 20.5 for it. Where do you see it? We have one of these. 20. We have one of those. Uh, 20.3 is best, man. That's, that's, I can't take any less. Let me see it. Fully stickered. Fully stickered, man. It's still not bad. Yeah, that's a good thing. I'll take it. Okay. Good deal. Knock that one down. Good deal, good deal. What's on the tutor? The tutor, so the story on this tutor is it's cardless right now because the AD we got it from mm -hmm. is like holding it ransom for some reason. <laughs> Here. <laughs> tutor? She, she, she did it what? on, she did it on two wow. as well. I zoom bought. in. Come here and zoom in on that. This is what's being, the card is being held ransom. But it's got its stickers on it. That's crazy. I bought uh, a black stick, one two six three three three, and I bought a um, <laughs> what a Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Yeah, both, held one, two, she held the and card the both. Oh, I had them yeah. sold to a dealer, so I call him. I was like, "Dude, the eighties holding the, the like the cards back, you know?" Yeah. And he's like, "Well, shit, like we have a deal, you know what I mean? They're fully, they're full kids." So I fucking call the AD. She gives me some bullshit that she does it with all her clients. They do it for thirty days because it takes Rolex thirty days to process it. Oh my god! Like, to get them warranty. I was like, I spent half a million. At, <laughs> In AD in the last like six months, I was like, it's never been the case that way. I was like, I get my wow. watches like right That's when I get them. insane. Yeah. Wow. So do you want to pull the stickers off that? Yeah. I was kidding. I do. I did it off a of black. Oh, oh, he did. I did it. It, it was horrible. Yeah, so, so the AD so we'll take that. sent me the cards like within like a week. Like what was it a week, right? Yeah. You, you so I got the cards right? back, and then she didn't send the tags. I was like, uh, um, yeah. I was like, you also tags. come with a white serial. I'm sounding like such a Healer now on the phone with her, you know? I'm like, yeah, you, you know, they come with these little tags. She's like, I never send those out to my customers. I'm like, bullshit. Okay. Like, and the dealer was cool. He didn't care about the tags, but 
That's so ridiculous. What are white tags gonna do for anybody? Yeah, she's like, I can see if I can get them. She's still holding links for she's the manager. Links too? Yeah, she's Just hold the watch. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And I didn't even want to buy the links. Here, you like, can have the Pepsi, but I'm keeping the bezel for a year. <laughs> this the is the only like, industry that you can buy a watch and immediately go to probation. Yeah. <laughs> you get a probation officer with your purchase. Yeah, close, you have to check in and you have to hold back, and it's just like, golly. Crazy. Four eights. I can send you my info for the wire if you, if you guys have cash. Let me write you a check. Yeah, you can write. Oh, actually, check. I might have cash. Yeah, cash. That'd be ideal. Let me see. Take a picture of the card. Oh yeah, where's your? I was about to say, where's no, the rest of it? We're gonna hold, yeah, the, yeah, hold the card. Yeah. yeah. So the box. I'm gonna hold your money. How about that? So here's the deal. I can write you a check, or you take hey, look at everything that card, that's in this envelope. Um, you get to pick. Daytona? You get to pick. Yeah, it's a very skinny I, Daytona. I get to write, either write you a check for 20300 or you take everything in this envelope. It never fails, bro. Can I flip it or you let it Yeah, well, wait, 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 wait. But if, it, if, yeah, you, if fine, you're you right, it. are you yeah. taking this or are you taking the check? Heads, you take this. All right, heads, I take that. Tails, I'll take the, uh, the cash. Okay. Yeah. What was it? Three grand in cash. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say this. Oh, man. So when's the new spot coming, dude? Uh, October 1st. October 1st. Did you lock the place in? Yep. We are spot. signing a lease huh. on... Yeah. Uh, well, it's going to be this week, but we'll be gone all week. Can you move? Huh? Well, you don't get Miami Yeah, we'll be in Miami at the Bitcoin conference all week. Yeah, so the rainbow. What do you guys think? Is it going to sell? <laughs> Look, I'm at 85 right now. I'll write you a check, or we'll do a flip, and I'll give you a mystery box. <laughs> We're all about mystery boxes now. <laughs> this is definitely not the mystery box. There's no mystery here. No, no. Anthony's box. I'm like, should I just like put it up on like a group? Well, they go for 65 without the band. I think the real money on that watch, like real talk, is 90 to 95. Well, you, yeah, you have it sold for 95. Let's do it. Lock you it got it sold for 95? Yeah. Sell it for 95. But did you count? Like, did you counter? Because we, like, we I don't know. know. Bro, there's no countering on that piece. No, just, no, just, you know, thank the person I offering. I want to get it for 95. Yeah. Listen, Listen, last week we're talking a $35,000 hit, but like you guys know how this works. But that's an AD hit. Yeah, yeah, fine. Let it go. We're just kind of just tired. If you can, if you can sell it, that 95, let's, let's do it, bro. It was like, last week, so I don't know what the situation is. But, Dude, if we lower the price, we'll sell that. That's yeah. what I was, that's what we're yeah, doing. We, we still have it at what? Yeah, 120? but on 105, I just checked your site, which is, that's, I think that's a fair for like somebody who wants it for their, their wrist, right? But, for the girl, dude. Yeah, no, or, or bougie girl right there. Super. Or, yeah. Small bougie now. I think the thing dude, is, if it were, I'll tell you this: if it were a forty, I'd be all over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, that wouldn't be here if that was yeah, a forty. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. If that was a forty, I would not be here. That'd be parked next to a Rainbow Daytona in somebody's box. You know what I mean? It just it's for the ladies. But how many ladies are actually? You'd be surprised. I mean, I think it's sick though. You going after the Rainbow Daytona for AD status? Bro, that's not anymore. My name is Jose. Oh, we never talked about the price on the Tudor, did we? Okay, so we? It's, it's, it's naked for now. We're um, gonna get the. It's, it's, that's the problem. We'll have the card. It's got everything yeah. else fully. How much? How much is it? Three thousand. Three grand. Yeah. There's money on it. That's a full Where's that? What is that? Let me see. I have the straps and shit. It's got size. It should. The card should be coming hopefully this week. The real question is, how if I bought this, would I ever it. wear it? That's yeah, the question. No. I, think, I, mean, I bought one. It looks like a scarf. It looks like a oh, <laughs> it's a, it's a ten foot. Yeah. You literally, we've got, got twenty five. You literally just gave me a reason not to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> What's retail on it? I think forty one change. Nah, it's more than. Oh no, forty five and change. Whatever. They, they give them ten percent. They give ten percent. So it's, it came, came out to like forty one hundred. Okay. What do you want to sell it for? Three, and then we'll send you the card when we get it, which should be this week. You're gonna hit her up tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, two grand now, and then a thousand when the card comes. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You would, you would be able to get rid of it for like four. Four. Okay, okay. So let's just take it. All right. Look, that one down too. Cool. Okay. Um, 
And you got three cash, you said? I actually have three cash. Yeah, we'll just give you the cash. Let's flip another coin. Let's wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Flip another coin. Or, other envelopes? or you take what's in this box. I've seen some empties around here, man. That's that's they're right there. They're, they're not all empty, though. They're not all <laughs> empty. No. <laughs> not even happening. Yeah, sorry. So are we flipping not for on a tutor, uh, envelope or box? I think our gambling days are over. You just won. You're on, a, you're on a hot streak. You never walk away from a hot streak. All right, let's do it. This is a heavy box, too. Shit, actually. One of those is... You know what's crazy? Actually, this is a heavy box. One of these is... There's a couple of these I still have watches in them, so we don't know what's in there. All right, you got to call it, and it, whatever, and he, so if you... If it, Heads, if it you lands, get the box. Tails, you get the cash. No, he, he called it. I'm with that, though. I was going to say that. Heads is box. Tails is cash. I want the first one. I don't want to... Hands. You get the box. See what you Shit. win. Box, box. No, I already know it's empty. It's an, it's no, that one's not empty. No. Yeah, it's empty. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm a man of my word. That's how it goes. <laughs> Alright, well, deal. You get a box. You get the box. We, we said the box. <laughs> uh, you guys keep your box. <laughs> 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 You make sure there's actually three grand. There's not actually three grand in here. <laughs> <laughs> you sure we don't have cash extra in the safe? I don't think so. Yeah, pull out those two bins. Oh, there is? Yeah. Things are good. No, oh, we're just kidding. <laughs> oh, look at that. We do have cash. Hey, go make quick. Go make a mystery cash box. <laughs> we'll step out. We'll step out for five minutes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it. What do you got next? There you go. <laughs> oh, hey, I've got a watch coming. It's a Richard, Vintage. no, but yeah, far from the Vintage. These are all the links in the band. It's a complete it's opposite. Actually the car when it comes in. All right, cool. Um, yeah. uh, it's two years. Where is it? 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 You're going to like it. Don't worry. Your RM? Why'd you ruin it? Why do you ruin everything? You just said Richard. Richard did. Oh, I did? You, okay. you gave it away. Well, I talked out loud. <laughs> 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 I, thought, I thought out loud. What made you decide that? So, yeah, we've just been selling watches. I mean, you kind of know a little bit. So you've been when did you get started? Watches, We've been probably. flipping watches. When did we get started? Uh, it's been like three years, about. Damn, you've been yeah. playing the AD game for three years? Sort of. I mean, we. so yeah, that, that's that, that's a, we've been going everywhere. So I mean, yeah, we've been doing the AD thing, but we've kind of been doing like the wholesale thing. Like we got connected with wholesalers too and dealers. So we've been doing that behind the scenes, but we haven't basically like exposed us as like dealers. like. Your guys' Instagram is littered with your face and stuff. We would completely hide that stuff in hopes that nobody. ADs out of their watches we're swingling profit. ads. Wow. Yeah, we're paying wow. ads to take <laughs> their watches. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Every time, and that's right a, that's the part that sucks. Every time you go to an ad, you're like, you, you think you'd be excited to buy a watch, but you're kind of sitting there like just nervous because every at any second they come out and be like, be you're selling our watches. We yeah, we did. Oh, we have that thought every time. We're just sitting there and we're like, and we're wearing our, we've been in, we've been in ADs wearing our hats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we'll take that one and we'll take that one. And what do you have in the back? They're like, right. nothing. They're like, okay, we'll take that one. Now, what do you have in the back? They're like, oh, look, we found this. Yeah. <laughs> found a root beer. Oh, right. Yeah, what sure. else did you find? You need to be on, uh, yeah. It would, <laughs> we need to be on 60 minutes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, what, what made us want to come out is on it or just to like, just basically like. like video of you walking into an AD like this. Right. Yeah, but basically, what got, what got us to do it was uh, uh, just long story short. Like, I mean, I was really into watches, uh, and when I wanted, I had saved up some money, and when I went to go buy it, no Rolex place had any watches. So I was like, "What the right. heck?" So we sat there, and then they make you feel like a criminal for asking for a watch. But we're like, okay, so you think, all right, I have to play the game. It's kind of the same thing with other, you know, luxury brands like Hermes and stuff. So it's whatever. But, you know, you go to these places, you're excited to buy your first watch. And they're like, oh, here's this wonderful Cellini that's been sitting on the shelf for and like 50 years. Face. Yeah. So that was annoying. And so then I ended up going to a great market dealer to buy my watch. And then I was like, man, this is a lot of money. Because I kind of grew up poor. And so I was like, man, there's a lot of money. So in my mind, I was like, the only way I can justify this is if I can like wear it and then get out of it. Right. So I kind of did some research, bought my first watch, and then I sold it a few months later because I, you know, I enjoyed it, but I kind of was ready to move to something else. And then uh, I made some money on it. And then I just kind of repeated that process, and that's how I justified it at first. And then people just kind of started recognizing me like, oh, you sell watches, right? And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, I sell watches. <laughs> you know, I've always been a little entrepreneur. So uh, yeah, th that's what got me excited. But what's really sucked is if you're trying to grow a business into watches, like it doesn't make sense to be hiding because if you're trying to get one or two watches a month, 
it's just better to like the and amount of money ones, yeah it's basically the amount of yeah and you don't know what there are and when they're coming yeah the cost of opportunity to to hide well, is, is way higher every time you make a rip and yeah. you and you, you get a rip from an ad and you can make 10 grand on a watch it may take you a month to do it you made 10 grand in that same amount of time we've sold 20 watches and made 20 grand at a thousand yeah. bucks a pop and guess what we've done in the meantime We've picked up twenty. Well, that's just we picked up twenty even, customers. Even from a, like a collector, or even just like an like somebody who likes horology and likes watches, like life is short. <laughs> you know, I might if, if I just played that game forever, I might never have the opportunity to hold and wear some of these watches. Whereas yeah. like this, I have the opportunity to literally pick whatever watch I want. You buy it right, you get out of it, you move on to the next watch instead of having to go to every single AD and play their game. And then who knows? Like I've been on the list for a whole for like not five years. The, funny thing oh. is like, the, the whole got discontinued before I could even right get here? the opportunity to buy it. Yeah, I've been on the list for seven years. <laughs> for a Never sub? For a yeah. sub? We haven't gotten just a sub. sub just from certain just ads. Sub. Yeah. And I mean, we bought like jewelry and stuff, thinking that was gonna help, you know, or whatever. I'm going through that right yeah. now with one AD. I spent. Right. I actually added it up. There's there's a watch she's waiting for me to buy, and if I buy it, it'll put me over the four hundred thousand dollar threshold. Yeah. Threshold. The only watch I've ever gotten from her was a no date sub. I got offered. She offered me a date, but I turned it down. Yeah. You know, part of the game. Well, I just... what, part of the game was I was just like, eh, I I wear my date. I wear my no date. I'll probably never wear that. I don't yeah. need two of the same one. Give it to someone that will appreciate it more than I will. Right. Which well, I is just a feel bad for, for that. Yeah, but you have the money to do that. I feel bad for some of these people that like have been saving for their first watch forever, and like I, I won't say which AD this was, but we walked into a local AD one day, and uh, they were like, "Oh, you want a Daytona?" And I was like, "Yeah, a two-tone Daytona, just for my grandpa, because it's my grandpa's anniversary this month, mm -hmm. 54 years are celebrating, and so he's actually the one who got me to watches." So I walk into this AD going, okay, I'm gonna ask for something easy, a two-tone Daytona. Cause usually those would be sitting on shelves or they, I thought they wouldn't be as hard to get. Yeah. They kind of laughed at our face and they're like, um, how about you spend 500,000 in our store and then maybe we can have a conversation about a Daytona is literally what he told yeah. me. Outright said that to you. Outright said that to me. Fuck. Yeah. I would have gone on every forum <laughs> and bla I mean, no, I, I know, that. I know it's frustrating and it sucks. And I feel bad for people who are stuck in that game because they might never get to own that watch. I mean, it is what it is, but that's that's why I enjoy what I do because, you know, you have these people who looking, you know, they've been looking for a watch, they've been trying to play the game, and they just get fed up with it, and they come and their their face lights up whenever you get that watch in their hand. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah. it finally you happened. Have that, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So and then like this, like this is, dude, you got more watches than probably 15 ads combined. Right more now. sport models than every yeah. ad. Yeah. In Texas. <laughs> Which is sad. Like you, you, like you can never go to an AD and see all these watches put together like that. Those aren't watches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, so. Become a Datejust collector. Going to Rolex. But anyways, yeah, that's that's basically it, man. Just trying to. Well, just trying to expand the business, and the, I felt the best way to do that was just to forget. Come out. And yeah, just come out. Like I said, every. Every every watch you're getting from the AD at retail, we're flipping twenty, right? Twenty five. Well, 30. same here. Like there, so I, I had somebody tell me that they were going to give me a white face Daytona, and they said wait four months. In that time that I waited four months, I slinged like ten or fifteen of them. Well, dude, uh, you know we've done. Yeah, congratulations to y'all. Yeah, thank you. Get on the YouTube thing. Like get yeah. your videos out there. Come in, come into the store. Y'all shop with us all the time. It's annoying having to block y'all out of all of our videos it's a work on darby's end too hey shout having out to, to darby blurb, for the big old blurs yeah having to blurb y'all out and having to hide people on camera so you're gonna do better you're gonna do better coming out like this you're gonna get way more business dealing in the gray market than you are waiting on ad's to yeah, right to stroke your ego a little bit for sure but um you guys do a lot of business with us so yeah congrats hey thanks bro appreciate it it's gonna be more fun yeah, yeah. Good time. so let's Marco. go celebrate
All right guys, welcome to the end of week 21 and I've got a few announcements to make so we are going to jump right into the numbers. Now, if you're following along consistently, you know that every week we have a sales goal we try to hit that's gonna keep us on track to hitting 35 million in sales by the end of the year. And this quarter our sales goal is $538,462. Now, uh, once again, we surpassed that goal and we beat it by 58% coming in with $941,650 in sales. Of that, we did 36 watches, 27 went to retail, nine went to wholesale. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and we are not going to share profits anymore. There's just too much conflict and too much uh, chatter that I just don't like reading and listening to in the comments. So I've decided we're, never, we're not gonna share our profits anymore. We're just gonna let that be what it is. But I will say that for the year, up the running total up through the end of May, our sales total is $10,679,430. So that leaves us with $24,320,570 left to go in sales. So we've hit 10 million in the first five months. Two of those months, uh, you know, February and March are always expected to be slow anyway, leading in a tax season. Generally, based on my numbers last year, uh, middle of May, end of May, it starts to pick up. August, it's, it's hit or miss in August, but by September, you're full on in and business is going really well. So it's very, uh, it's encouraging that we were able to mimic the uh, you know, 2020 sales goal. We hit 10 million last year in sales. Well, we've hit that in the first five months and business seems to keep getting a little bit busier. Our sales staff is doing a great job. We were also gone uh, five days last week, meaning we weren't focused on any sales. We were doing stuff for the business. They were back here and they're absolutely killing it. Uh, we're headed to Miami tomorrow for another week. So we're gonna be depending on them heavily again to get sales done while we're out at the Bitcoin conference also, which is another announcement coming up. Uh, then when getting past the numbers, <clears throat> the biggest thing I want to talk about is Elijah and the fundraiser and the GoFundMe we've been trying to promote to help him get a new kidney. Guys, uh, his initial uh, request was to make a hundred and or was to earn one hundred and seventy one thousand for his kidney replacement. Uh, you guys have gotten us well over that. We're at 186,000 as of the time of this filming, and I don't think we're done yet. I wanna keep pushing this. Um, that bill that he put was just for the cost of the kidney transplant and the surgeries. There's gonna be downtime, there's gonna be stuff, you know, per, all this post-surgery uh, recovery time and other stuff that's gonna to have to go into that. So I wanna set him up. Um, we wanna set him up to uh, not have to worry about anything. So I think we can get him to 300,000. We're gonna put a link in the description. Let's keep sharing guys, whether it's $5, 50, 500, 5,000, no, no, no amount is too small. So let's keep helping him and let's get him to 300,000. Uh, the next announcement is gonna be the second winner in the Rolex competition. In the last video, I posted that we were gonna pick three winners to go head to head to win a Rolex Milgauss, the second place would be a Tudor, and the third place would be a trip to come out and see us for the day. Uh, we picked our first winner last week. This week, the winner is Giovanni Crivelli. Congratulations, buddy. You are winner number two. So next week, we're going to pick winner number three, then we're going to put all three of your names in a hat, and we're going to simply draw it on the video and see who wins what. So I will post your name down in the description as well, and reach out to us. We'll get in touch. All right, the next topic up for discussion, and it seems to be a conflicting one. People are for it, against it, whatever. It's the $2 million raise that we're doing to fund our new building. Now, uh, I will say for all of you those that have donated, we have opened the Facebook group, y'all are in it. We've already sold two watches. We sold a brand new black ceramic Daytona 2021 for 30,000 about 3,000 under market right now. We also sold a new Submariner date Starbucks for 16.5, which is also about 3,500 to 4,000 under market value. That's just a couple of deals we are gonna be offering in that group. For those of you that are also possibly interested, still thinking about it, wanting to understand what the, what the real perk is gonna be, that's gonna be the biggest perk is whenever we uh, have inventory that we would generally wholesale out to other dealers. Rather than sell those to dealers, we wanna offer them to retail clients to be able to buy a watch at True Wholesale. 
Uh, there's no set number of watches that we're going to do. There's not a set um, inventory that we're going to do. It's just going to be when we have overstock, when we have extra stuff that we need to free up cash for for other deals, it's going to go in the Facebook group, along with many, many other perks. Now, we have about 300 confirmed members. Uh, about half of them have been put in the Facebook group right now. The other half, they're still, we're still getting all that in. So if you're interested, the link will be below. Fill out the form and every morning I'm going to be sending out an email to show you exactly what it is uh, you're going to be getting and how to get into that. So the next announcement is tomorrow we are leaving for Miami. We're going to the Bitcoin conference. We're going to be displaying there Wednesday, Thursday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So if you guys are in Miami, if you're in there for the Bitcoin conference, look for, I don't know the booth number offhand, but it's going to be the one with this logo on top. It'll be the only watch dealer out there. So come by guys, say hi, take pictures, look at some bad inventory. I believe we've also got Neil and Sean from Timepiece Trading popping in to bring some of the RMs and paddocks and APs to spruce up the inventory as well. They'll be there with us. Come by and say hi, guys. Uh, last thing and the most exciting, one of the most exciting is, as you guys saw, we have locked in new space. Uh, right now, as I'm filming this, we're in a little 300 square foot office. It's tiny. It's cramped. It works, but it's time. It's been time to move on to bigger and better. Uh, we've looked at a lot of locations. We've been through a lot of negotiations. We have finally found a group that is, is as excited about having us come there as we are going in there. It's gonna be held, or it's on the first floor in the Thompson Hotel in downtown Dallas. It is about a 3,800 square foot, um, it's an art gallery right now. And the bottom floor is about 3,800 square feet. We're talking about building a second floor mezzanine that's gonna add about 2,000 square foot to that. So all in all, about 6,000 square feet of uh, shopping area, lounge, YouTube studio. Um, it's going to be awesome, man. So I, uh, are awesome guys. So just stay tuned. You're going to see stuff posted as we get more through the development process. Uh, actually, as I get done filming this video, I'm going back to looking up inspiration photos. So right now we're in the design phase, but we are shooting for an October 1st grand opening. And I can tell you this, it's going to be the biggest thing that Dallas has ever seen when it comes to the watch and jewelry industry. Uh, you know, you guys have seen us, we've done stuff, we do stuff pretty big. We do stuff a little obscured and this is nothing, this is not gonna be anything short of that. So also, also there's been some comments of what if we don't raise the money? Well, if we don't raise the money, that's fine. We have the money to do this. We can take out a loan. We can, we can get the money to do this. Uh, it's, it's gonna happen. People buying into this and adding money to our funds just makes it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Uh, and it also ties people to the business. So for the few people that are out there that can't understand why someone would want to donate money to these guys that are running around blowing money like it's nothing, uh, one, we don't spend money like you think we do. And two, the idea behind asking people to buy into this was to get people committed to our business, tied into our business. Who's going to be the biggest supporters of a business? Random people watching the YouTube channel, people seeing the Instagram post, or people that have actually invested money into it. Those are going to be our biggest supporters, our biggest fans. The fact that you are now invested in this business, you already had to believe in it to get to that point. Now that you've put your money in, you're invested in this, you are going to be our biggest supporters. When we post new videos, when we have new uh, events, y'all are going to be the ones that are working to promote this and helping us promote it and helping us spread the word about it. And so when you get a thousand people on board like that, your business, that's better than any form of advertising ever will be. And that's where the idea came to initiate this building raise. But uh, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a few naysayers out there. There's always going to be people that are going to scream Ponzi scheme, uh, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, I don't know. I, there, you read the comments, it's all over. But uh, all I can say is this building is going to be awesome. We couldn't be more excited about it. So uh, guys, I hope you like this video. The next video is going to be a little bit better. We've changed up the style of doing some things based on stuff I've read in all the comments. So Tune in next week and I hope you like what we've done. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, 
Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop a video. If you're following along consistently, you know that every more, every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. we drop a video and we don't plan on stopping. We actually plan on increasing that in the coming months. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this once again and I will see you in Miami next week. Thank you for coming all the way from Colorado Springs to, Thank you. to join us here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, my first time meeting you and I know you have some, uh, some strong history with Darby. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. I heard of Darby years ago. Um, we used to skate Richardson High School. Oh really? And there they have a, a massive handrail. <laughs> and uh, I used to rollerblade too, which I got made fun of. But uh, this handrail was so hairy that the skaters and the rollerbladers wouldn't touch it. So I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah. I, mean, I know this handrail very well because I used to skateboard. Yeah. And I've heard so many horror stories about that handrail. It, it's, it's gnarly. <laughs> it was, it was, it's, 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 it's a handrail even today. You would still, yeah, you know, make know, a name for exactly yourself skating that about. rail. So I went to Pierce, so Richardson was our rival, yep. rival high school. Yeah. So. Well, he was just a little kid, and uh, I heard, I, I'd heard that he board slid this rail like wearing some shorts, and I was like, no way. There's, a, <laughs> there's absolutely really? no way. Oh, my man, Darby is an animal on a skateboard. Oh, but so, I heard about him through that board slide, and from that day on, I was. I just said, uh, I got to meet that guy. Come to find out, we lived in the same neighborhood. And we had a lot of the, we shared our stories, our upbringing, how okay. it was very similar. And uh, you, from there. Were you pro at this time? Yeah. 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 Nice. Or walking through that door. He was traveling the country, or the world, yeah. as a professional. And then, in what year did uh, the pink green tie, when, when did this happen? That was 2009. 2009? Yep. Acute pancreatitis. I didn't even see it coming, and I've always prided myself on you know being fit and healthy. So it, it came as a real shock to me. Woke up about two weeks later, out of an induced coma, and uh, that's when I learned that I was stage four renal failure, and that uh, in order for me to like not live the rest of my life on dialysis, I would need a kidney transplant. And I kind of laughed at them like, uh, you're exaggerating, I'll be fine. And they said, you basically have about eight weeks to regain kidney function, or if you don't regain kidney function within eight weeks, you'll be on dialysis. So have you been on the, have, how long have you been on the list for a kidney? How does, how does that all work? Because imagine, you know, you've got this, you know, imagine the days before GoFundMe. Yeah. And before charities and organizations that, that do raise money for stuff like this, if you just, if there's no hope for you raising that kind of money, do, do you just not? You just die. You just, okay, you just can't get a kidney. That's, that is exactly how it works. Wow. So, gotcha. so how does it change when you have the money? Does that change it? Oh, yeah, because, I mean, money talks, you know, but once you can go to them and be like, listen, I've got the support and I've got the resources to make this happen, then they take you more seriously. And, and with me, they've, uh, they've been kind of wanting to put me uh, at the top of the list, but I haven't had the funds or the resources or even the hope, really, that I would be able to accomplish a kidney transplant. But uh, I think I'm gonna get through it. You're, you're gonna get you will, through it. You will, man. You got a yeah. support behind you. You got, you know, you've raised the money. Y'all did it. And we're not stopping, well, we're not stopping there. You know, the beauty, we've talked before, uh, having a big social media following is awesome, but what matters is this right here, what we were able to do in, what, just over a month? Oh, yeah. Man, that? it's mind blowing. I've never seen, I've seen a lot of amazing things in my life, but this is probably without a doubt the most amazing thing that I've seen. And I mean, I. I didn't see it coming. My my roommate was uh, he saw me struggling, and uh, he was like, "We got to get you a GoFundMe." And um, my my love language is serving. Like I like giving. I like empowering other people. I don't do well when people are giving to me and empowering me. And so uh, he knew I was uncomfortable about it. So he waited till I went to bed, and he started the GoFundMe. And then he told me the next morning, he's like, "Look, you're gonna be upset at me, but I." I had to follow my heart 
and I started you a GoFundMe, and I freaked out. Like, I seriously freaked out, and I started having anxiety. So walk us through the, what's the next steps? How do, how do you know, or how long do you have to wait? How do they go about selecting it? And then yeah. tell us about the recovery time and stuff, because I can assume that just, you know, I've mentioned that when we were when we were launching this, you needed this much to pay for it. There's going to be downtime. There's going to be recovery. You're going to be yeah. out of work. Like yeah. work. So we're going to keep pushing this and pushing this to make sure you've got nothing to worry about for a while. So tell us. Well, at this point, now that there have been funds raised, um, I can go in and tell them, listen, I've got support. I've got resources. So you all need to make me a priority. But uh, just being alive. And being able to enjoy my life is is a blessing and that's what i'm looking forward to is just being able to enjoy my life again because everything is based around dialysis you know everything is based around you know how i feel with my kidneys and how often do you have to do dialysis three times a week i'm gonna go after this interview um four hours at a time what do you what do you want your life to look you like know, what do you want to do I have been just struggling for so long to have a normal life that I've forgotten like how to dream like that because everything is just uh, dialysis. I've, I've given up on life. Um, I've just been kind of living off the vapes of um, skateboarding and teaching and production um, because it it's just what keeps me alive, I guess. But I don't know what the good life would be after a transplant. Just being able to wake up and not know, and, and know I don't have to go to dialysis and being able to just hang out with my dogs, being able to travel again. You know, I guess that would be the good life. You know, something in me just keeps telling me, you're going to get through this. You're gonna get through this. And uh, so, I, I believe that voice inside me to be true. And so right now the focus for me is just getting through this chapter. And once I get through this chapter, whatever is for me will present itself and I'll embrace it and make